Chevalsky's horse might be the last truly wild horse. It diverged from the domestic horse somewhere between 35,000 and 54,000 years ago. But back in 1996, Chevalsky's horse was all but extinct. Since then, conservationists have been working to bring these horses back from the brink. And thanks to their efforts, there are now roughly 1,300 of them running wild in the plains of Mongolia and China, along with another thousand or so in zoos and breeding centers around the world. But there's one big problem. All of these horses have been bred from just 12 to 16 individuals, so there is not a lot of diversity in their gene pool. And that brings with it problems like inbreeding, reduced fertility, and shorter lifespans. To try and deal with that lack of diversity, scientists have cloned horses to release into the population using DNA collected in the 1980s from a single horse. One foal named Kurt was born in 2020, another named Ollie was born in 2023. But how did a dead horse become a dad? Well, through the science of cryopreservation. And freezing DNA might just be the kind of scientific insurance policy we need for putting extinction on ice too. If we're okay with the ethics of it all. In the 1970s, scientists realized that freezing genetic material could help in their conservation efforts. After all, it's literally preserving a little piece of an animal that you could then use to make more of them, or, like with Chevalsky's horse, keep the population genetically healthy. Over several decades, cryobanks popped up all over the world. They store not just DNA, but embryos, semen, and live tissue, which can be used for research or for breeding. But of course, this isn't just as simple as plopping a chromosome ice cube into your regular freezer and calling it a day. Cryopreservation is an exact science. Samples are collected and then frozen at around a brisk minus 196 degrees Celsius. They're usually also treated with some kind of cryoprotectant, which stops ice crystals from forming that could warp or alter the structure of the biological material, effectively killing it. At those those temperatures, it's like the cells are suddenly frozen in time. All of the chemical and physical processes going on inside suddenly stop, but basically exist in suspended animation, ready to jump back to life when the samples are warmed up again. And when they are, the samples can be used for all sorts of science and conservation efforts. For example, the largest animal cryobank, the San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance Frozen Zoo, used thawed cheetah sperm to fertilize a cheetah egg from one of their cats to make an embryo. Cheetahs can still be notoriously difficult to breed in captivity, and even artificial insemination hasn't been all that successful. So transferring ready-to-go embryos might be the best way to get the animal's numbers up. Researchers from the American Museum of Natural History in New York City and Tulane University in New Orleans have also used DNA from cryobanks to create libraries of genetic barcodes, sections of DNA that are unique to different species. For example, in 2010, they created such a barcode for different marine turtles who look remarkably similar, and they could use this barcoding to tell them apart. That's practical in a conservation sense because that barcode could help them track the illegal trade of the turtle's eggs or meat by tracing the item back to its geographic origin. What's more, the samples in cryobanks can be used by scientists to study the population genetics of species at risk of extinction or test out new assisted reproductive technologies. But for all of their conservation catalyzing triumphs, cryobanks are not perfect. For one, even though there are many cryobanks around the world, they could be more representative of all of the weird and wonderful wildlife out there. For example, a 2023 study by Andrew Mooney and colleagues did a kind of cryobank stock take of the frozen zoo in 2019 and found that while the frozen zoo contains material from 965 different species, that only includes 5% of the reptiles, mammals, birds, and amphibians listed on the IUCN red list as threatened. Which is not bad, but with a bit more sample Sampling from zoos and aquariums, the authors of that study calculate that this percentage could increase to 16.6% or include an extra 707 threatened species. And of species listed by the IUCN as extinct in the wild, the frozen zoo has genetic samples of half of them, but based on their proposed sampling from zoos, that could increase to 91%. And even with the best kept and used cryobanks, there are still a whole host of ethical issues to consider. For one, how do researchers choose 
choose what gets stored and saved. Partly this might come down to what's available, like the stock take study suggested, but it also depends on feasibility and how much value we humans place on keeping certain species, which often means picking the charismatic ones. And for another, who gets to use the precious samples that are stored in cryobanks, and who decides? Is it the people for whom the animal is culturally significant, the biologists trying to save a species, those in charge of the banks themselves, or like some other independent body? Then there are questions of whether we should be bringing animals back from the brink at all. In an essay published in 2013, philosophy professor Ronald Sandler pointed out that the process of cloning can be pretty stressful for the animals and lead to health problems during development or the suffering of the clone and the surrogate that carries it. He also noted that creating new individuals doesn't address the root cause of why these animals are endangered in the first place. Things like habitat loss, climate change, or pollution still exist once a clone has been made. When it comes to Chevalsky's horse, cloning is a bit of a last-ditch lifeline, and there's at least some effort to make sure conservation efforts address ongoing threats to the species as well. The animals and the areas where they live are now legally protected in Mongolia, and efforts are underway to tackle problems like illegal mining of those areas and human interference. Since 1996, the species has gone from extinct in the wild to critically endangered, and as of 2011, endangered. And the goal is now for the cryobank horses, Ollie and Kurt, to become breeding stallions. The hope is that they can sire more horses that will be released into the wild and keep the species going for years to come.